right, I'm about to get back into working on this code base. Since my last main series or arc of videos, I did the procedural art experiments and then I used those to build the animation for the 2022 soundtrack videos that came out not long ago. So I have a bunch of extra code sitting around and I'm just going to probably go delete most of it. It is going to be a loss on some of it, but it was mostly code that I wrote as quickly as possible to get the experiments done, to see how things worked. None of it's really written or organized carefully and it'd be a lot more work to organize it. Most of the work in that sort of thing would go into figuring out where I can deduplicate concepts and what the most useful fundamental pieces are and stuff like that. And I don't really want to put a lot of time into that. So for this video, what I'm going to do is just do a nice quick cleanup over a bunch of code that's sitting around in the code base and get things ready to go. And then I'll talk about what I want to do with the rest of this arc. While I'm going through this, there is one thing I want to pull out and keep, and that's some thoughts I was having that I left in the comments about how the tool 2D API could be structured so that it's possible to extend it in this way more gracefully. Right now, there's sort of no concept in the API of creating a section of raw OpenGL code or raw whatever other API you're using code. I think that would be useful because just, just because you're using the tool 2D API doesn't mean you wanna be completely locked into it. So having a formal concept in the API that says, hey, here's how you begin and end a section of you doing whatever you want, and here's how you can connect that back in with the more specific things. Like if you wanna use the existing rectangle rendering and text rendering and interlace that with your graphics OpenGL or whatever you're doing things, uh, th there's like a prescribed way to do that. That would make this a slightly better API and I'm probably gonna wanna use that kind of thing again in the future. So having that be formally in there with a plan would be cool. So I'm gonna take the notes on that and move it to the stuff I keep. All right, so for the rest of this arc, what I want to do is wrap up with the graphic stuff. There's a th three big things that I want to get done in this arc. One is I want to start being able to read from my graphics. So right now my graphic system is sort of write only. I can obviously send it to the screen so that I as a human can see it, but I can't write code that reads from a buffer into the CPU memory and inspects it that way. So I want to be able to do that. And that's partially because I want to be able to do things like generating images and videos in the future. And so being able to get back at that data and do more stuff with it on the CPU will be good. But it's also because that's going to help me with my second bullet point, which is that I have some fidelity issues with some of the shapes I was drawing. I found when I was getting towards the end of the arc that there were issues with my sh rectangle rendering where if I had small enough rectangles moving slowly enough, it had really bad flickering or disappearing and reappearing artifacts. And I want to kind of get a good handle on that and really isolate the issue. And there's a couple different things I think might be getting in the way and making the quality less than it should be. And so I want to test them out one by one. And I want to be able to sort of inspect things up close instead of just with my eyes and really see for sure that I'm understanding things like how pixel centers work and how polygons are tested against pixel centers and how fragments are computed and all that good stuff, right? It's stuff that I've read in the docs and I have a general understanding of it, but I want to just get right up in there and experiment with it and see it for myself so that I can cross over from having a sort of intuitive understanding of what it should be according to the docs to really just believing it because I've actually seen it in, in an experiment that I did myself. And that I think is going to help me a lot. Finally, I want to do a pass over the API. There are some design decisions in the API that I didn't get a chance to clean up and reconsider. And after doing that procedural art stuff and the soundtrack video, I had some notes in there that I've preserved now about how it would be better if the API allowed me to mix the tool 2D stuff and the lower level stuff that's specific to specific graphics APIs so that things like those procedural art experiments in the future will allow me to sort of intermingle them without having to hack in and sort of fiddle with the, the internal variables of those systems. So that's what I'm going to get working on throughout this arc. In this particular video, I'm going to just start by getting an OpenGL example for reading that back buffer, and that'll be it for today.
Okay, so I've done some reading about some OpenGL stuff. It looks like it should be pretty easily, hopefully, to read from the window. I'm going to try using this function glreadpixels and see if that gets the job done. Let's take a look. All right, so what I've got so far is pretty basic, but it does seem to be reading from the window pixels, and I've been able to test out different colors and make sure that they look the way I, or I understand the way that they're gonna come out, where the red, green, blue, and alpha channels are inside the output memory. So now that I've got that, I've got the basics that I'll need. Next time, I'll dig in deeper and start using this to actually inspect how certain shaders and certain equations and input data are getting turned into output data. See you then.